Welcome to the warm up. We are in Corey Rawson to chat with first year head coach Nathan Westenbarger. Coach, first year here with the Hornets. How are things going this summer and into training camp? Training camp. We got a little bit of a late start, you know, being hired in middle of June, but so far so good. I mean, kids have been doing a great job, you know, in camp picking the offense up because there's a lot of new terminology that they're having to get used to. Just, I think, getting used to me and everything these last few months have been good. But uh, pretty good. for the most part, I'm happy with them. And we talked a little bit ago about you know being more consistent. I think that's the big thing we need from them right now is just being consistent from a day-to-day -day basis. Whether we're going one practice or two practices, giving three or four good hours every day. But you know we're getting closer, and hopefully within the next couple of weeks we'll be able to put on a good, put a good product out there on the field for the community. So about a week in right now, yeah. and you're coming from Macomb, familiar with the BBC and part of the Chris Algie coaching tree now. Yes. The third of his yeah, assistance to planted coding, coaching tree right time, so yeah. i bet you're looking forward to uh taking on macomb <laughs> in week eight is that a game you have circled on your well schedule? i mean maybe a little bit but you know, being you know getting such a late start we've been so focused on our, ourselves and getting ourselves better that we haven't had the luxury of looking, looking ahead, ahead too much you know as much as we'd like to you know it is it is kind of gets kind of redundant you know to work on the same fundamentals every day and i'm sure the kids feel the same way but I think it's important to, you know, make sure that we do get good at those fundamentals. That way when we're playing in week eight, we're not necessarily so much worried about stopping Macomb. It's just necessarily about getting to the right spot, getting lined up, you know, tackling well, blocking well, catching the football, and all those other important fundamentals that help you win football games. So, How are the numbers this season? Uh, Numbers-wise, we're close to what we had last year, you know, around 25 kids. But uh, – I think getting the late start kind of hurt us in that regards where, you know, there was a lot of, you know, uncertainty in the program, you know, with Coach Meyer moving on to Napoleon, getting a professional upgrade. So I think that hurt us in the numbers regard. Well, you know, we've been able to recruit about three or four extra more guys than, that, were out, that weren't out when the summer began. So, I mean, if we feel like if we'd have been here maybe a month or two earlier, they'd be in a little bit better. So we're at the, mm -hmm. we're at the quality stage more than the quantity. So we're kind of focused more on the quality of the kids we have. And we feel like we got a pretty quality group of kids, you know, because even we were talking, even when we were at Macomb, you know, we'd have 45 kids and probably 16 or 17 were varsity football players. Right. So we're maybe having to accelerate a few of the guys a little bit, that more than we'd like to, but we're hoping maybe out of those 25 we can maybe get to 18 guys we feel comfortable putting out there on Friday night. So. And uh, just three seniors, is that correct? Correct, yep, three seniors. So it's a young group. Uh, how are the seniors taking on a leadership role in camp? Outstanding. We have three really good seniors, two of them that are – have several several years of varsity experience, and then uh, Matthew's back out for us this year. Matthew's just a natural natural leader. You know, kids follow him. He expects more out of the kids, which is the one thing leaders need. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to not only expect a, what expect out of yourself, but expect more out of your teammates as well. But uh, three great seniors. Yeah, we'd like to have more, but again, it's for the quality and quantity stage with the seniors. With three guys that we feel really comfortable with out there on Friday night leading our program. So. How important is conditioning knowing that you're a little down in the numbers compared to other teams, especially within the conference? Oh, it's probably the most important thing, you know, at this, especially at this point. You know, we haven't gotten to hit too much yet at this point just due to trying to stay healthy. But, you know, when you start cracking the pads a little bit and you're getting up and down several times over the course of a few hours, you know, that's the conditioning aspect that we talk. Not necessarily, you know, running gassers or running hundreds, right. running forties. It's, you know, picking your body up off the ground, you know, collisioning with somebody else, getting back up. So mm -hmm. I think that's something we're gonna focus on more as the hitting gets a little bit more into more, you know, grunt of things, but at the same time, you know, we also realize we gotta be able to, you know, we do focus on a little conditioning after each practice in. So yeah, we're gonna to need to be in good shape. You know, we just talked about that at the end of this practice where we, we, we need to sprint. If we're gonna be in shape, we're gonna to need to sprint because we are at a huge disadvantage numbers wise. So hope, I think the kids are, most part are getting the message, but there's a few that still need to understand that at the same time so and that'll come with time i'm sure opening against bluffton a big rivalry game for this program mm -hmm. is that what you're focused on right now or is it still, you mentioned getting things installed is it what are, what are you looking to, forward to about the opener against bluffton oh just a chance just a chance for our kids to compete you know because a lot of you know even with the scrimmages you know you just it gets really redundant coming out here for the first couple weeks and you know doing the same thing same drills hitting the same kids it's going to be fun just to hit somebody else you know hit somebody in a red jersey you know 
or a red helmet for the mo other thing. But, you know, like you said, we're focusing really a lot on ourselves right now. You know, throwing in a few. We've watched some film on Bluffton. Mm -hmm. uh, we've incorporated a few things into our practice plan, but nothing out of the ordinary to take away from learning our fundamentals still at the same time. So. And how important is it to get off on the right foot? Last year, this team started 0-5, and it seems like things can go south pretty quickly, yeah. so that opener is really going to set the tone. Right, and not, not even just the opener, just, you know, the first few weeks in general, just trying to see how far we've come in the first couple weeks. That, you know, because you're right, you know, when you lose games, things tend to snowball either way, whether you're winning games or winning you're losing games, mm -hmm. it tends to snowball. So hopefully we can get on the right track and, you know, maybe put – be competitive early on and win some games while we're doing it so and you should get a chance to see your guys go against another team in a couple of scrimmages that you have scheduled the uh, first one is on the 15th and that'll be a try and then you've got one on the 22nd against Waynesfield Goshen what are you hoping to get out of that okay well first and foremost obviously with the uh, numbers situation we want to stay healthy right we want to stay healthy and get a chance to evaluate our kids you know get them on tape you know let them see you know themselves on film and it's, it's easy to sh tell a kid what they're doing wrong but when they show when they actually see what they need to improve on I think that kind of you know cuts that double-edged sword so to speak where you hear it yep. and you do it and you get a better chance of correcting it so the big thing is you know staying healthy of course but at the same time evaluate and find out who can who's competitive who's a tough kid who's guys we can count on and who's guys that need some more work so let's talk about the BBC you're familiar with it coming from Macomb, a lot of good teams. Any particular game you have your eye on, and also it's an expanded conference now with three right. new teams. What do you think those new teams, uh, North Baltimore, Hopewell, Loudoun, and Riverdale, will bring to the conference? Oh, I, I think they're three great additions. I really do. I mean, all being from relatively close by to where, you know, North Baltimore and, you know, Riverdale, we've had them on the schedule back at Macomb for years. We scrimmaged Coach Nutter over at Hopewell, Loudoun. Yep. So, you know, we're – I'm relatively familiar with the three schools, you know, being, you know, a Finley you know, Macomb native, but I mean, so I really think it was a three great additions for the, for the league and ju just the league in general. I mean, I'm sure the usual suspects will be up there, you know, the Macombs, Liberties, Arlington and Lipsick is going to be outstanding. I think with coach Mangus, he's mm -hmm. going to score a lot of points and, you know, Van Buren's a sleeping giant. I really do think that they're a sleeping giant. You know, if coach Sh Shaup can never stay healthy, you know, I think they're going to do some things. And hopefully by the end of the year, we're up there towards that conversation as well. That's kind of our goal. So, Well, Hornets trying to climb their way up the BBC. Thank you so much, Coach, for taking the time to sit down with us. Time for a break on the warm-up. When we come back, Mark Kuntz will sit down with those three Hornets seniors. Welcome back to the warm-up from Corey Rawson High School. I'm Mark Kuntz, joined by the three Fighting Hornets seniors. Matthew Allspaugh, the quarterback safety. In the middle, the big man, Ryan Forney, on the offensive and defensive line. And Ian Mosier down on the end, playing receiver and safety. And Matthew, let's start with you. What does uh, Coach Westenbarger and this new staff, what do they bring to the program? Oh, they bring a lot. I mean, they bring a lot of energy. They're, they keep us focused a lot. You know, they bring just a lot to the team. They... Uh, like you said, they brings that quant or that quality, you know, to our to our program. Ryan, as coach kind of touched on, kind of a little bit of a, of a late hire as uh, Coach Meyer got the job up at Napoleon, and there was a little bit of instability there for a second. Did you see that making a negative impact on the program back in April, May, June? Uh, when Coach Meyer said he was leaving, it was kind of like. You know, we're a little upset about it. I mean, I like Coach as a, like an athletic director and everything. He was nice, cool to get along with. But, I mean, it, it was a little upsetting when he left, but it was definitely the right choice for the team and everything with Westenbarger being hired in and everything. Ian, how has this summer been different for Corey Ross and then the last couple of years? Well, it's been a little bit more learning as we're putting in the new offenses and defenses and going over different systems. It's a little bit of a challenge to learn the new things after doing it for three years, three years of difference and then you're going all new for the last year. It's a little bit challenge. Ian, for the fans in the stands, what are they going to see different about Corey Ross and football on the field? Uh, it's going to be a lot probably faster pace than the past couple years. Usually we're trying to use up the play clock, make the game a little bit shorter so we're a little bit shorter on our legs. We're probably going to try and speed it up a little bit. Ryan, it seems like this year that's uh, one of the trends. We've talked to a lot of different schools. We talk about they want to go up tempo, they want to go faster. You're a big guy, I'm a big guy. We can be honest with each other. <laughs> Do we like the up-tempo stuff? When I like it. Fast? I All like right. it. All right. I like getting faster. 
how much conditioning did you have to put in extra conditioning work to, to prepare um, for that type of offense? Normally, when like we're doing team offense, I'll take a, I'll like, take a break off and then I'll run just, like eight or nine twenties and then do some up downs just to get in shape. It's showing too, I think. Matthew, as the quarterback, how do you like this offense? Um, I like it a lot better than the under center type offense. I like being able to spread out the field and be able to read stuff a lot better. Do, do you, can you feel a sense from the other kids at the school that they're more excited? Do you, do you have maybe more kids wanting to play football with the El Tempo style? Um, I think so. There's a lot more just energy within the group most of the time. All right, we need to grab a quick break here on the warm-up when we come back more with the Hornets here in W. Welcome back to the warm-up from Corey Rawson. Third down as we continue with Matthew Ryan and Ian. And Ryan, let's talk about defense. We talked to offense a few moments ago. Defensively, what are, are the Hornets going to be able to sting people defensively? Hoping so. I just, we got to do what we got to do, you know, just go out there, smack them around, create holes, pile up, and let the linebackers do their job. And the week one matchup with Bluffton, it's a big game for you guys each and every year. I know on social media, you see the, the hashtag beat Bluffton all the time. Is that an exciting first game for you guys? Yeah, it's always a good challenge because they're right down the road from us. We know most of them. So it's a fun game to play, not just playing against them in the game, but you know pe the people on the team. So it's always a challenge. You want to beat them just to have that upper hand against them. Ryan, as you look at the rest of the BVC, we know the top half of that conference is going to be very strong. Is Corey Ross going to be able to maybe sneak up, get in the middle of the pack, maybe contend for the BBC this year? Kind of hoping so. I feel like we're the underdogs this year. Just kind of want to surprise people, just come out and smack some people around and go for the top. Speaking of smacking some people around, you look at the BBC, there are some really big linemen in the BBC, yourself included. We were talking earlier to uh, Andy Mangus, new head coach at Lipstick, and he goes, you know, the, these linemen, that's what you see in Division One, not Division Seven." Is there any explanation for the reason why you got all these big boys hitting each other? I think there's something in the water. <laughs> <laughs> something in the Blanchard Valley water, absolutely. Matthew, what uh, what are the goals for this year's team? Uh, the goals are just get wins. Get wins and just play hard, make the playoffs. As a senior, you guys are all seniors. There's a lot of underclassmen on this team. Ian, how do you try and mentor those younger kids? How do you try and teach those kids? Well, it all starts with, as a senior, you should know more of what you're doing. Helping them out if, they're, don't have, if they have trouble lining up, getting them in positions, if they need help on a play or running a route that's different. It's just getting them so they're in the flow of the offense or the defense so they're not out of the loop and confused all the time. All right, Corey Ross and Fighting Hornets looking to keep the confusion to a minimum as they start under first-year head coach Nate Westenbarger. That's going to do it for us today on the warm-up. I want to thank all of our guests, including head coach Nate Westenbarger. For Matt Fickle, I'm Mark Coates. We'll see you next time on WSN.